Hi, I'm Rachel. I'm Minimalist Machinist on Instagram and I'm here with another Seamly 2D walkthrough video. Okay, today we'll talk about how we convert this pattern piece that we've drawn in Seamly 2D into something we can print out as a tiled PDF so you can actually use it as a paper pattern piece. We've got two in our document at the moment if you've been following on with the walkthroughs. I mean, you might have multiple other ones. Th these tools still work in the same way. Uh, we've got back bodice piece and front bodice piece and we need to convert them to a work piece before we can start preparing them for print. If you try to go onto the next screen, which it tells you are here kind of <laughs> with the uh, arrows in what or do we need to do things? If we try to go to the details page too early, it's telling us we've got to go back to the draw because we need to turn it into a work piece before we can do anything. What we need to do is go down to this detail tab and choose work piece tool. And then we, what we need to do is select our points and our curves in a clockwise motion around the pattern piece until we've enclosed it. And then that creates a work piece that we can then start adding labels and grain lines and things like that too. So in order to do that, we start with our first point, which is O. Well, I, you can start anywhere. It doesn't really matter as long as you go in a clockwise direction. So the first thing we need to do, and we're starting with a tricky one here, this curve, can you see how there's some little arrows on it here? Those arrows are pointing down, which is, is pointing in an anti-clockwise way. And it took me ages to realize what you're supposed to do with this, but you're supposed to hold shift down uh, before you click it, which means that the direction of the curve drawn um, goes in the clockwise direction. So if you try and add it as it is at the moment, the kind of drawing will stop here. And what you need to do is hold shift down to make it go turn in the clockwise direction so you can carry on walk, walking your way around this piece. So hold shift down, click, and it adds that curve. And you see I was enclosing it in this red line. We need that to basically be the shape of the piece. So you keep going. So you add your G point, your I point, it fills in the line between it. This line has already got an arrow going in the direction we need, so we don't need to do anything other than click it. D point, B point. This curve has the arrow going in the direction we need it, so we just carry on clicking that. We click our F2, K2, R. Now this arrow is going in the wrong direction, so I'm gonna press um, shift down, click, and then we want our last point, which is P2. When you're done, you can see the red lines go in exactly where we need it to. You press enter. It brings up the points and paths that you've selected to make your pattern piece. These all look right to me. Just okay that at this point. Now you can see that you can go through to the details page. It allows you to, and it shows you your pattern piece that you've drawn out as a work piece tool. Your back one isn't one of those yet. So you need to go back to draw and go back to your other piece. If you've got any other pieces and do the exact same thing. In order to add our seam allowances and grain lines and labels and things like that, we need to choose a work piece to work with, which is the front piece here. And a right click on that to get our options back up, which is the same screen as um, came up before when you first created the work piece. You wanna to go to seam allowance to start with and okay the allowance of seam allowance. Um, I'm just moving out of the way so you can see here. How it works is these nodes are related to points on your pattern piece and your seam allowance is set here. You can actually go back and use your formulas that you added here by yourself. Five eighths of an inch is a good one, isn't it? So five, five times one eighth of an inch. So five eighths of an inch is a decent amount of seam allowance just for um, showing you how this works. What I'm gonna do is set the seam allowance the same all the way around and then show you how to reduce it in some areas. It's probably the easiest way of doing it. So I'm gonna apply that and what that's gonna do is add the same seam allowance all the way around your piece. Now, the way you do it is these nodes are all your points on your pattern piece, and we need to work our way around um, and reduce it in certain areas. So you might want your arm side to be less of a seam allowance than your, say, side seams. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work all the way around and show you how I do it. So you want node O. Before it, you want the current seam allowance, which is this area here. So before O and after P2 is gonna be your full seam allowance. After O, you might want it in half of that. So after 
I want maybe a half of that, which is 0.79 centimeters, or I could change it to maybe a centimeter, say. You can change it to whatever you want, or you can change it to a formula as well. So um, we could change it to a quarter inch. Let's do it to a quarter inch. So before O is gonna be the current seam allowance and after O is gonna be a quarter inch. So when we apply this now, it's gonna show you less here and it's gonna to build to the full amount here. You see that? So then we need to go to our next point, which is G. We're working our way around clockwise. And before G starts, we want it to be what we just chose for after O. So it's um, quarter inch. If I apply that, that means that that quarter inch is going to work all the way around the arm side now. Um, the next thing we want to do is, I'm going to leave it at 1.5 centimeters there. Maybe want to do the same, the quarter inch thing here at the um, neck hole. So if we go to I, after, before we want it, the current seam allowance, which is this, and after we want it quarter inch again. Okay. You can apply it so you can see it as you go along. And the same again, D. Before it, we want the um, reduced seam allowance. So change it to our quarter of inch. And apply that. So the front, um, I'm going to leave as two pieces. So yes, I want the full seam allowance there. And the bottom, I actually remove the seam allowance so I can see the actual bottom of the, um, where the bottom of the bodice fit finishes. So at B, I want before that, I want the current seam allowance and after that, I want zero. And the same F2, before it, I want zero and after it, I want zero. All on that bottom, I don't want any um, seam allowance at all. See how I'm, re I'm removing it as I go along here. So after K2, so R before zero, after zero, and P2. So we're on up to here now, yep. Yeah. R to P2, so the last one we need to get rid of is before P2, so I'm gonna make that zero. So that's my seam allowance is um, kind of set. The other thing you might wanna do is you see where these um, shoulder points are here, this is denoted by this angle option here. So if I go to G, which is where the um, angle that I'm not too keen on is, um, I can play around with this angle until I until I think it's right. So there's a few options here. I just click through and see whichever ones work better for me. See how this changes here. It depends on how you've set up your piece and you know what you want it to look like in the end, but th this is where you change it basically. Um, until it's the best one. So I think that by points intersections was the best for this. You can also change it when you come to um, twirl in it when you've printed it out. Um, need to do the same for that. I mean, I'm going to leave it at that. I need to print it out and test it to see what I'm doing next. Okay, that that one's done. So I'm going to just do the quickly the same with the back one. I'm going to right click options go to seam allowance, allow my seam allowances. Um, um, I did five eighths of an inch, didn't I? So I'm gonna do five times one eighth of an inch and apply that and that's gonna go all the way around again. Um, now this is a back piece and I'm not gonna keep it as two pieces. I'm gonna cut on the fold on this one. So I'm gonna start by removing any seam allowance down this the back center back so I'm going to start with zero after that I want a reduced seam allowance so I'm going to do <clears throat> so I'm going to do a quarter inch apply that um, I need to go to BF which is the next one and before that I want my reduced seam allowance so that's a quarter inch Um, after yeah I want to keep it at the full one now this, um, you see where BR2 and BR4 are here, um, this is where we play with those angles again to stop it um, doing kind of a zigzag line up there. Um, I still haven't got my head around exactly which one's right for which which thing yet and why, why it works that way, but I mean, I just do it by eye at the moment. As I say, I'm no expert in this. This is just how I've taught myself how to use it. So I think this, that's probably the best one. Um, I want to leave all that. Um, from BH onwards, I want a reduced seam allowance for the arm side. 
So after I want my quarter of inch. And I need to do it at BN as well. So before BN, um, I want my reduced seam allowance. Okay. So these are my side seams, I want full seam allowance. And again, I'm just gonna remove all of the seam allowance at the bottom. Um, Cause I wanna see where the bodice fits me properly, whether it hits my waistline or not. So BM onwards. Before it is fine, I want the current seam allowance because that's my side seam. After it, I want zero. I want to zero everything out. So BM, BK2, before and after zero. BO, before and after zero. B12, BI2, sorry, before and after zero. BB. Before zero, after, yep, zero, because I don't want, uh, I want to cut on the fold. So, yep, that's exactly right. I want a bit of um, seam allowance here. I need some seam allowance in the shoulder. Um, I need a little bit of seam allowance in the arm side and I need my side seam allowance. So that's that, apply okay. So now we've got our seam allowance sorted, we can add our grain line. That's another easy one to do. So if you just right click on your pattern piece, you can go to grain line and you want the grain line visible. It doesn't really matter what you set here because you can change it once it's on, but um, basically you just set it at an arbitrary length and then you can change it. I want both arrows on it. So it's placed it somewhere random so you can literally just drag it and you can change the length of it. You can do the same with the back. Add your grain line. Uh, just add a random length. Um, arrows both apply. Click on it, move it, and lengthen it. I mean, you can set an exact amount, so it's the same front and back, it doesn't really matter. Um, okay, so now the other things you can do is add um, a label. Now, Seemly 2D hasn't got a great amount of information on setting your labels and things like that. You can only set a basic label and it is a little faffy again on how you do that. Oh, I forgot to say, yes, you can also drag these around, which makes it a little bit easier to work with because you can zoom to fit best and they actually fit in the screen properly. Um, and I don't know if I mentioned in the older ones, you can actually, uh, in the other videos, you can move your labels to wherever you need them to be able to see them properly as well. Um, that's another thing I find useful when there's lots going on in the corners and things like that. Um, Oh yes, you can also rotate these grain lines to whatever you need. So, and you could also set those in that um, pop-up box as well. So we have our two pattern pieces, our front and our back piece. Um, we want to add some labels maybe, so you don't get them mixed up when you've printed them out. So the next thing you need to do is, um, to add those labels, you need to go back into those options. So you right click and choose options. You wanna come down here to the label section um, and the way this works is you kind of fill out these um, options and then you make a template that refers back to the um, content of these options. So first thing you need to do is just fill these in. So um, it depends on what your um, kind of setup is going to be, but you can you can put literally anything in these and you can come back and change them later. And that's the whole point of being able to use a template. So you set your template and then you might want to set it as a default template to use in the future. Um, then you don't have to set it up again and again and again and you just know which bits to fill in. So, I mean, I'm just calling mine A and B, doesn't really matter. Um, the name of the detail, and the detail is just your pattern piece name. So I want to call this front bodice. I know that I want to cut two of these, so I'm going to say two, and I don't want to put it on the fold. I want to put my back one on the fold, but not this one. So this is just the tick box, tick it on and off. This is to do with the fold, so I don't want to add any of that. I mean, might want to say, use this to say uh, seam allowance um, is one, is five eighths of an inch uh, and one quarter of an inch. Um, orientation, I don't need to put any of that, just, it's fine. Rotation, um, tilt I don't need to add any of that so I'm going to apply that and then I'm going to make a template so oh the other thing is you need to okay it here so it just shows um it won't show anything yet because we've not shown we've not added anything into it to show so um just make sure that that is on um edit template the first thing we want to add is 
we want to add a peace letter, which is the first what thing we came to when we um, added our information here. So you can see a preview here, A, which is the letter that we put here. And we want to add another one, which is currently empty. And we want to add maybe our pattern piece name and preview that a front bodice and you just kind of go along like this until you've figured out exactly what you want to add so we want to cut to so um <clears throat> quantity and you can actually add words in here as well so you can say cut quantity so it should be say cut to um from main fabric anything like that You know, anything you add in will show in the preview. Um, then we add another one. Insert, what do we need to do? Um, we added our an annotation with some seam allowance information, didn't we? So we'll just do that. Um, annotation. So seam allowance is five eighths of an inch and plus a quarter of an inch. Um, I think that's probably all I needed to add at this point. It's not a big deal to go back and add any more. We could say, um, we could add the measurements file name so we know what measurements we used um, in linking to this. So measurements file name. Yeah, so that's that's an interesting one. So you can say that um, this is the file name we used of the Seemly Me measurements in order to create this bodice. So you can quickly refer back to that. There's loads of information. You, I mean, it's entirely up to you what you want to add. Um, the date is quite a good one to add. Obviously, it's helpful to see what date you printed it out or what you know what date it's um, actually been made. Um, customer name. I haven't got that set up. So these are actually things that are in the main preferences. So how about we do this? We'll we'll do one of those so that you can see where those are done. So I could say company name or designer name and it's not showing anything in there which means we need to go and add it that's a good one okay okay that um that's all we need to do at this point we can set the sizes of it here but you can ask uh, drag and drop it so it doesn't really matter so you see how small it is there we can actually move that and just make it bigger okay so just like our grain line you can kind of drag it and make it larger and you can set a certain width of this so they're all the same. So to add that extra customer name or customer information or the other things that you can add into your label that weren't an option once we right clicked on this was to go to file and pattern properties. Um, you can add some information in label data. So you could say the pattern name is, I mean, Armstrong bodice block. Um, pattern number, whatever pattern number yours is, if you might not have one, company and designer name, um, I could just call that minimalist machinist, which is my Instagram title, um, handle, sorry, uh, customer name, maybe it's just for me, it's Rachel, um, date format, um, I'm going to do that um, as British date, day, month, year, time format, that's fine. So now that's added in the information that we selected in these options. So if we just go back to that quickly, um, go back to edit our template. Now I might not want the author in there. Now I'm going to remove, maybe I want to add the customer name. Um, if you're working for somebody else or you could say in your customer name, you could call it Rachel February or Rachel um, bodice block one or whatever. It doesn't really matter. You know, th these just link back to that um, settings option I just showed you I just wanted to show you how you can change those so I want to apply that again you can come back and change any of these um, you can do the same for the back um, you just need to go through and add all these labels okay so that's my labels and grain line and seam allowance done for these pieces so the other thing you might want to add in your pattern piece that um, I'm not going to find relevant here but you might want to use on your pattern piece um, whatever you're making is to add things like pass marks which is those little notches you can add um, in order to make sure you can line your pattern pieces up. What you need to do is go back to draw, your draw option. You need, need to add a point where you want the pass marks to be so 
for example, say we could put a, a pass mark halfway along the side seam, say, and it's things for like when you're putting sleeves in and things like that. So if you want to add a pass mark just to test it, you could do um, a point along the line. So I'm going to just do a point along this line. In fact, I'm not, I'm going to do it halfway along. So it's bang on the middle. So um, midway between two points, I'm going to choose point P2 and O. Um, I'm going to okay that. I'm going to just call it actually pass mark test. Apply that and it should just make it halfway along. Yeah, perfect. Um, and now I want to do the same with the back piece. I'm going to do one halfway along here as well. So I'm going to do this BM to BN halfway along. I'm going to call it B for our um, naming convention. And I'm going to call it pass mark test again. Okay. Okay, so we've added our pass mark um, point just to test how it works on our front and our back pieces. And if you go to back to details page, it won't be there because we didn't add it when we walked through our pattern piece to make it a work piece. Uh, it's a little bit confusing, but all you need to do is go back to um, draw. So we want to use this insert node tool to make sure it adds to the work piece. So we want to select it and it says item pass mark test and we want to add it to the front bodice. Okay. So if I save that and look at the details page now, it still won't show. So what we need to do is right click our options um, and you see there it's added, but it's got a line through it because it means it's excluded. We want to just untick that. So it's added to our work piece. And if we apply that now, it shows it on the actual piece there. See here. So with that pass mark um, showing on our work piece now, we can actually add um, the pass mark onto it. So we need to tell Seemly 2D that it is going to be a pass mark, that actual um, point. So we need to tick, right click it and make sure it's a pass mark, it leaves a little line next to it. Um, and then you can go down to pass marks and you can show how many, you know, how you want it to show as a mark. So here it's put one line as the pass mark, can you see here? Um, and then you can just do that to whatever you want it to, you know, however you want it to work. So, you know, how sleeves sometimes have um, one mark on the front and two marks on the back or vice versa or whatever you, however you set up your pattern piece, um, you can you can do whatever you want. So it's just a way of making sure that your pattern piece is true up um, once you print them out. So I'm just going to do one line just to show you how it works. Okay, so we've got our pass mark on our front piece and um, we need to add it to our back piece as well. So if you want to go to options, we've added it as a node um, and it's shown up here as excluded. So we're going to unexclude that and apply it. And it's basically added as a, a final node in the list and it started the drawing. It started to move the drawing um, to finish at that point. So what we need to do to correct that is just make sure it's in the list between BN and BM. It didn't do it on this one because happily it was the last node in our drawing because we started at O, didn't we? And it would have been the last one. So it's not, um, it's not made an issue with that. So all you need to do there is right click options and then just move it, literally drag it up the list. So we want it between BM and BN. So we just drag it up, apply it, and then that corrects the um, drawing. Just make sure that that little um, tick box is ticked as well. So the next thing I want to do is get this print ready and there's two ways of doing this. Normally what you would do is go through to working through the seamly process and it tells you here what the different modes are actually that's useful. Um, you click through to layout and the way this works is really complicated. It's just over complicated for what it needs to be. But basically what you do is you choose a paper size and then you have to kind of <laughs> try and choose, try and choose a paper size that fits everything in. Um, and then just keep practicing and just keep trying and trying and trying until you've managed to fit all your pattern pieces into it. It's just the really, really odd way of doing it. Um, so, yeah, so I always just choose the biggest paper size and then try and fit it in um, and then go back and just keep keep trying to do it. You can reaccess those inf that information through this tool here. Um, what is this one called? Um, so that's obviously not right. That's not an economical use of paper. You can't literally drag them and drop them. It's really complicated. Um, I just keep going back and trying to figure out how to do it. So um, I auto crop unused length. I 
ignore the margins. I um, don't rotate the workpiece actually, um, usually. So I'm just going to tick that and see what that does. Kind of rejigs it. I mean, why, why it can't just put them next to each other, I don't know. Um, but basically, that's what you do. You just work your way through the paper sizes um, until. So that's made two pieces, two pages now. Um, I also reduce the amount of gap between the two pieces to like nothing or as slow as it can be so that they can go next to each other. I'm going to go back to A0. Basically, you're, you're, what you're trying to do is get this to a point where they're close together on a piece of paper and that paper is then cropped so that it fits as... Um, as small as possible on the two pieces of paper. So we've got it to a point where the pieces are on the same page, they're next to each other, it should be easy to print, right? Well, actually it's not. <laughs> if you go to File, Layout, um, we've got some options here. We can print preview. Yeah, that's fine if it's not a multiple page document. Um, if you are actually printing it on a zero, or was it? I can't remember what it was. Um, we wanna be able to do a tiled PDF because most people have um, A4 printers, don't they? So we can look at a tiled PDF of what it's going to look like. This is page one. If you show the all the pages on there, I mean, <laughs> it's just, I don't know why it's just so hard to print from Seamly 2D. Um, what I would do normally is just keep messing with the print set up until I can see that it's maybe all the pieces are on the same, you know, eight, eight, se eight piece section and only print those and figure out what page numbers they are and just print, say, page three to five or you know just so it's got the only pieces that we need it's really frustrating cloud moonflower on instagram has informed me of a much easier way to get this um pdf tiled pdf printed without messing around with that layout section it's actually completely infuriating i can't stand it anymore um, and this is the way i do it all the time now so just want to export um as a pdf not a tiled pdf just a pdf um doesn't really matter and none of this matters because you're going to open it in um, another program now. Now I want to find that on my desktop and open it in Acrobat and look it gives me the um, file with just two pieces next to each other. I've not had to mess around it's literally where it's supposed to be um, don't need to mess around with page sizes or anything like that literally my work pieces are there with my pass marks with everything I need and that's cloud moonflower told me about that it's much 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 easier way of um, printing out your things they're next to each other already don't need to mess about with any of that you just go to file print this is a free app by the way acrobat you want to choose poster and it tiles it for you look it's so easy and um, you can add cut marks on where to cut them or I mean you, you might want to mess around with um, your preferred way of doing it but I can see there that it's going to take me eight sheets of A4 paper um, and you can mess about with options there but you don't really need to do anything it's already sorted for you um, it's just such an easier way of printing out from um, seemingly 2d it's much much easier well that is it that's all you need to do and then you print those out you can piece them together and then that's your pattern piece is done the other thing you can do if you're preparing something for print is to make sure you've got a test square that you can print and make sure that your um, bodice piece is printed out the correct size. So what you do there is just create a new pattern piece and you call it test square or whatever you want to call it. Um, and you just want to make a basic um, square. So here's your point down here. It starts us off at S. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so we just want to do a basic square. So we want to start here hold shift down press enter um you could make it whatever length you want um you could do a 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter square so let's just do that you don't need to mess about with the point labels or anything you just need to make a basic square holding shift down and enter to make sure they're all 10 centimeters in length holding shift down and enter 10 centimeters Okay, and um, you just need a line to finish off the last one because you've already got your points. Okay, and then now you need to convert that to a work piece. Just do what we did before, follow that round, selecting all the points, enter to finish. Um, we don't want any seam allowances, no internal paths. Um, okay, and we're going to look at it on the details page. 
Now you can plonk that anywhere. I mean, if you want to save paper, you could put it in between in your actual bodice piece so you don't have to print any extra paper, but I'm just gonna nestle it into the armhole here for when I create my PDF. Um, you can add a label to that like we did with the other ones. So you could say, um, detail label. You wanna say, you could even just do an annotation to say, this square should measure 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. And the only part in your template you need to add is the annotation. Piece annotation. Okay, apply, okay. Um, and that's it. That just creates a 10 by 10 square that you can test your print out with. Export here. Um, and I'm going to use the PDF like I did before. Pull out version 4. Save it to the desktop. And you print this out in the same... And you print this out in the same way. So you open it in Adobe Acrobat. And now that should have your square that measures 10 by 10. You just print it in the same way using poster and it'll print it um, next to your bodice piece. Okay, that's all for now. I'll be back soon with some more Seamly 2D walkthrough videos soon. Cheers.